Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. I am expecting God to strengthen me and enable me to do what I do. Surely if God wants me to do this, then he does not want me to drag my body all over the globe feeling miserable all the time. Surely he can give me the strength to be able to enjoy what I do. If you're negative, grouchy, sourpuss, hard to get along with, critical, jealous, you're probably also going to be sick. I see you in the overflow rooms. And I see you on the other side of that television set too. At least in my heart I do. Proverbs 17, 22. Somebody was telling me the other day about a relative who just been diagnosed with a very serious situation of cancer and talking about the treatment, what to do and how to handle it. They began to tell me, you know, this person has just been so negative their whole life. It is just so hard to be around them. And he began to tell me how this person who is so negative was telling him about sitting next to somebody <laughs> that was being so negative <laughs> and how they got so tired of hearing this other person's negative. <laughs> and it's like, hello? But you know what? We don't, we need to look at ourselves honestly. And we need to stop blaming everything on somebody else. And you know, you just ought to ask yourself sometime, how easy am I to get along with? How, how easy is it to offend me? How easy do I get my feelings hurt? What am I doing to make somebody else's life better? How many days out of a year do I waste feeling sorry for myself? Am I jealous of people who have more than me? Am I judgmental? Am I critical? You'd be amazed what would happen if you had just one 10 minute meeting a day with yourself. <laughs> Come on now, I'm preaching better than you're acting. <laughs> All right, Proverbs 17. 22. A happy heart is good medicine. And a cheerful mind works healing. <laughs> But a broken spirit dries up your bones. Get happy, you might get healed. Need to laugh more. Not be so deep and intense about everything. Amen? <laughs> Jesus is a healer. And if you look at Isaiah 53, it, it says, He forgave our sins and He took our sicknesses upon Himself. Now, I'm going to say a few things that I'm going to try to explain, lest anybody get confused because I don't want that. But sickness is a result of sin. Now, it may not be your own personal sin, But sickness was not in the world until man sinned. That was not in our DNA. We were supposed to be happy, garden life people who fellowshiped with God, ate the fruit, loved everybody, had a good time. But no, Eve had to have the stupid apple. <laughs> Amen? And so we all know that sin entered and man died spiritually and God made a plan right away to redeem us. But the sin principle is still working in the world. And where the sin principle is working, there's disease and germs and all kinds of wretched stuff. And so there's going to be times just because you're here in the world, you're going to run into some germ on a day when your, you know, immune system's kind of off or whatever. And so we can't all avoid ever having any problems with anything out there because we're in the world. But we can expect 
and believe God for healing. And we can do everything that we should do to make sure that we are just not an open door for every kind of sickness and disease that Satan wants to load on us. Amen. You know, I feel pretty good for an old gal. I mean, I, I have people tell me, listen, I've got, I, we have guys that work for us that are in their 20s that can't keep up with me and Dave. I mean, I'm telling you the truth. They're like, this is not normal. This is just not normal. Well, you know what? It's not normal. It's not. But a lot of it's your mindset. Don't begin to think old. Don't get old people thoughts. Amen. Think strong. Think positive. The more negative you are, the worse you're going to feel. The less you laugh, the worse you're going to feel. The more you judge and criticize other people, the worse you're going to feel. The less you do for other people, the more selfish you are, the worse you're going to feel. I am telling you that our joy is connected to our health. How many of you needed to be reminded today that he's your healer? How many of you agree that sometimes we just get in that habit of putting up with stuff? And really just trying to handle in the natural. And I'm not putting down anything natural. I'm not going to stand here and tell you not to take medicine. I'm not going to tell you not to go to the doctor. If God tells you not to do that, you do what he tells you to. But, you know, I'm not going to tell you that. I mean, if I need that, I do that. I take medicine. I go to the doctor. But I've also been corrected by God if I start leaning on that kind of stuff too much and not making it very plain that I trust him as my healer and that I'm expecting him to keep me strong and healthy and well. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. Now, waiting, what does waiting mean? They that wait upon the Lord. It means to look, to long for, to expect. I am expecting God to strengthen me and enable me to do what I do. Surely if God wants me to do this, then he does not want me to drag my body all over the globe feeling miserable all the time. Surely he can give me the strength to be able to enjoy what I do. Amen? So I'm just telling you, don't just settle in. Well, I guess this is just the way I'm going to feel. That's scary. I mean, it's really scary because that spirit of passivity. A passive person just kind of gives up and they just, they hope God does something kind of, sort of, maybe. But they're not expecting. They won't even have the energy to open their mouth and say anything. They don't even resist the devil anymore. They don't even rebuke the devil anymore. They just kind of get into agreement with it. Well, you know, my arthritis is really hurting me today. Well, and I, you know, I'm not making fun, but I'm saying don't call it your arthritis. I mean, you can say the arthritis that is in my arm is hurting, but it is not mine, and God is getting rid of it. How many of you know what I mean? We start taking ownership of this stuff, you know? Now, well, I don't want to get ahead of myself, so let's do this. <laughs> Psalm 103, 1 through 3. Oh, my gosh. We should meditate on this every day. Bless, affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless, affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not one of all of his benefits. Who forgives every one of all of your iniquities? Who heals each one of all of your diseases? Well, there it is right there. Amen. Now, I believe that there may be maybe even a million people watching right now by television.
that you never had any idea at all that God was even remotely interested in healing you physically. Well, I'm telling you here today that he cares about every single part of you, not just the spiritual part of you. He cares about your mind, your thoughts. He cares about your emotions. He wants to heal your broken heart. He wants you to feel good. He wants you to have energy. He doesn't want you to be loaded down with sickness and disease. And from this day forward, I want you to start trusting God to begin to work in your body. Now you say, well, now wait a minute. You know, I'm a Christian. And I've been believing God for healing and I'm still sick. Well, keep believing God. Keep believing God. And let's don't get in all the whys and whys and whys and whys and whys. You know, well, you know, we say, I know a woman is a great Christian and she died at the age of 25. You know, why does my sister have a crippled child? She was a great Christian. And you know what? To be honest, I don't know the answers to all that. And we, we, we are so foolish when we start trying to figure out stuff that is way, way, way beyond us. You know what? I don't understand child abuse. I don't understand sexual child abuse. I was praying when I was nine years old, asking God to deliver me out of the situation I was in. He didn't. He did give me the strength and the grace to go through it. And I tell you what, I came out. I came out. I didn't get a good start, but I'm going to have a good finish. Amen. Now... I still don't understand all that. But you know what one of the first steps to my victory was, was when I stopped trying to figure it out. And I'm going to tell you today, if you want victory in your life, then you've got to stop trying to figure out stuff that is way beyond you. And you just have to say, I don't know why. I don't care why. All I know is I believe God. Come on, is anybody home in the house today? I believe God. If we can be stirred up to have that kind of faith, well, you know, if, if healing is for today, then why am I still sick? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you've been like me and done a bunch of dumb stuff. You know, if you want to have healing, one of the things you've got to have is common sense. And, you know, we don't always use it. Now, I've had a problem with my back. And for the last two months, I've had a pretty serious problem with my back. I mean, I had like three cortisone injections in my back. I mean, I've been to the chiropractor. I've been to the doctor. I've seen a surgeon. I've had a bone scan. And it's kind of like, well, we don't really see anything that could. Don't you, don't you just hate the mysterious, Ill, you know. <laughs> I always get the mysterious stuff. And uh, so God brought me back to something that, he tried to teach me 20 years ago. I don't know why we are so slow to learn. And, you know, I had a lot of hormone problems when I was younger. I had breast cancer when I, in 1989. I had to have a hysterectomy because it was an estrogen-dependent tumor and then all the mess that goes along with that. And so I went right into the change of life. Couldn't take hormones. You've got to be a woman to understand all this, but it was just like... <laughs> Woo, I tell you what. Man, you ain't lived till you have your first hot flash. <laughs> Lord have mercy. There is no man in here that will ever understand that. Well, we don't call them hot flashes anymore. They're power surges. <laughs> anyway. I'm saying all that just to say that I've had my share, so I'm certainly not throwing stones at anybody here today that, that has something physically wrong with you, but <laughs> I hate to sit here and tell you that God told me something this many years ago and I didn't do it, but, you know, I tell everything else, so I might as well, you know. <laughs> I mean, years ago, I felt like God told me, if you will wait on me five minutes a day for healing, I'll keep you healthy. Five minutes a day. Well, I did it for a few days. You know, then that five minutes, I didn't have time for that. Isn't it amazing how we'll wait in the doctor's office for hours every month? Get our prescription, go wait at the pharmacy for another 35 minutes. Then take the medicine and wait for that to work. And then if it don't work, we go get it refilled again. We go back and wait in the doctor's office again. Why can we not wait on God for five minutes?
Now, my back is probably about 95% okay now. And I've kind of got used to the chair, so I'm going to keep it. But uh, <laughs> I probably don't need to be running around all over the place like a maniac anyway. I need to kind of rest a little bit. But here's, here's the point. First of all, going back to the back and the feet. I mean, I've had bunions taken off my feet. I've had corns taken off my feet. You know, it's like I get, I usually don't do conferences in December because it's not a good month for conferences. So for a while, we just called December surgery month. <laughs> because I don't have the time to get anything the rest of the year. So, you know, I, I can only even afford to get something certain times of the year. So I was having, I had a bunion taken off one year. And then I, you, I mean, I had corns taken off twice. And, you know, on and on and on. So, okay, but now, why? God, why, why, why? Since I am preaching your gospel and I'm helping people and I'm trying to do everything that's right, God, why? Okay, now, <laughs> rewind. Is anybody with me? All right. Rewind to like a long time ago. I was in one of my very first meetings when I was still working at the church in St. Louis. It was only a women's meeting then. And a little old lady came up to me. Honey, I have a word from God for you. She said, thus saith the Lord. If you don't stop wearing those shoes that you're wearing. <laughs> spike high heels, three inches. Lived in them for years. I've walked miles on these hard platforms. Why? To be cute. Come on now. All right. So, thus saith the Lord, if you don't quit wearing those shoes, you are going to have a lot of trouble with your feet. So, smart aleck me, you know, I'm thinking, well, she's a sweet lady, but she probably doesn't even know what a pair of pretty shoes are. So, <laughs> Oh, come on, don't act like you've never done that. <laughs> you know, here's the point. I did not want to take my shoes off. And when we don't want to do something, it's amazing how selective our hearing gets. <laughs> so, I kept my shoes, kept marching around. We'd have praise and worship. I'd jump up and down, and, you know, all this stuff. And back starts hurting, feet start hurting. There were times when my feet would hurt so bad that when I would go back to my room at night, I would almost cry. Now, you know what? That was just plain stupid. I mean, I'm born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost, preaching the gospel, but I'm here to tell you that was stupid. <laughs> Amen? Stupid. Well, all right, so now I got problems. Well, <laughs> Does that mean that God won't help me and he won't heal me? No, he will. But I can't keep being stupid. <laughs> so if you need healing, the first thing you have to commit to is getting over stupid. <laughs> Amen? Now, okay, so you know, now I've got some muscles in my back that need to be strengthened, and I've used wrong ones, and got the wrong one strong, and the other one's weak, and so now, you know, it's like, they're like, honey, you pick up everything with your back, so I always, all my life, I just bend over at the waist, pick stuff up, you know, and Dave has tried to tell me for 20 years, don't pick that up like that, you need to, and I'm like, mm -hmm. Stupid. Is anybody understanding me today? Right. So, first thing we do is repent for stupid. And then we remember what God told us. You know, we go to, you know, like for me, I mean, I'm going to the chiropractor and I'm doing what I need to do and I'm doing my exercises and I'm taking my physical therapy. But in the midst of all that now, God's given me one more chance. Wait on me. <laughs> so 
I debated on whether or not to talk about this because I didn't want to just lose the power of something God was speaking to me. But I believe if I can share this principle with the people who sit under my teaching, I believe that you can see some amazing results in your body. And I, I don't want you just to do this just as something to do. If you don't really believe what I'm saying, then you might as well wait until you do. But I am telling you that to wait on God is one of the most missing things in our walk with God. What do you do when you wait on God? God, I'm expecting healing in my body. I'm expecting energy today. I'm expecting strength. I'm expecting to be creative. I don't want a tired mind that can't remember anything. I believe that your healing power is working in me right now. And every day I get better and better in every way. You are my physician. You are the Lord that heals me. By your stripes I am healed and made whole. And I don't even think in that time that you have to be talking out loud. I think you can just meditate on these things. Take five minutes at lunch. Wait on God. Take five minutes in the evening. Wait on God. Every time you get an opportunity, just take a few minutes and close your eyes and just say, Lord, I thank you that you're my physician. And you know what, I, you know what I've decided? I am not going to spend the rest of my life being aggravated with one thing after another. I am not going to waste my time running, having to have a doctor's appointment every time. You know how many appointments I've had to have in the last two months? I mean, it's just been one thing after another after another, and some of it was going to be free time for me. And So first we get rid of stupid. <laughs> Are you with me? <laughs> we repent for stupid, you know, and we, we do our part, and our part is to take care of ourselves. You know, if you want to be healthy, you got to get some of the stress out of your life. Stress will kill you. It'll kill you. Well, I can't help it. I'm just so busy, and everybody expects something out of me all the time, and no sane person can live like I live. It's no wonder I feel bad. <laughs> I'm about to give you great wisdom. <laughs> Learn to say no. <laughs> Take your schedule, go over it, and everything that you're doing that is not something that you believe God wants you to do, cut it out. Everything that you're doing that's not bearing any fruit, cut it out. Okay, now, I don't have much time left, and it's good because I'm going to talk to you about your eating. And that way, I can just get out of the building real quick. <laughs> you cannot live on junk and feel good. You are what you eat. Well, I can't help it if I see a chocolate chip cookie. I've got to eat a dozen. Now, let's just don't be ridiculous. I mean, you have got the power of God. The same resurrection power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. Do not tell me that you do not have authority over a cookie. <laughs> now, you can eat one if you want one. There's no law. You probably should eat one every once in a while. Thus, my book, Eat the Cookie by the Shoes. But don't say that if you eat one, you have to eat a dozen because then that means cookies are in control. <laughs> don't overeat. Don't undereat. When God sent the manna, he specifically told them that they could gather an omer a day for each person, and it was a little bit over three quarts. He rained manna down from the sky, not Twinkies and potato chips <laughs> and fudge and soda pop. The desserts in our life should be the occasional thing, not the daily thing. There's nothing wrong with having dessert. There's nothing wrong with having a soda. There's nothing wrong with having a candy bar. But if you're going to have to have that stuff every day, then here's going to be the result. You're probably going to weigh more than what you want to weigh. And even if you're one of those super skinny people that can eat the whole refrigerator and stay thin, that doesn't mean that you're not going to feel bad. And I believe that we need to feel good. I don't even think that we can pray properly if we feel bad all the time. And furthermore, when you feel bad all the time, you're grouchy and cranky and hard to get along with. And you don't walk in the fruit of the Spirit. 
We need to be healthy for God's sake. Amen? By his stripes, we are healed and made whole. Well, we might need to go to the doctor and we might need to take medicine, but more important than anything, we need to trust God and expect his healing power in our lives. Jesus is our healer, and we need to be confident in that, that he wants to meet all of our needs.